Yep, we've got some brand new Borderlands 3 news to go over. Hey everyone, what's up? Overworld Games here, and you know what? Let's dive straight in right now. We're talking microtransactions, we're talking XP boosts. This is official stuff, no BS, no speculation. It comes from uh, a spokesperson from 2K Games, and then also Randy Pitchford from Gearbox Software. And then also Randy Pitchford goes into a tweet spree, a brand new tweet spree, about all things Epic Games Launcher versus the Steam Store. So, you know, let's do this. Let's dive in. So, first of all, this first tidbit comes from PC Gamer. Check out the sources in the description below. It says here, here's how Borderland 3's XP and loot drop boost mods actually work. Now, this article, first of all, starts with some comments from Randy Pitchford, who talks about some of the controversies related to microtransactions, to all this stuff uh, regarding XP boost and so on and so forth. He says this, You completely missed my point. What I think is stupid is the idea of building Borderlands 3 to sell that garbage. Example, selling boosts and loot. That would be stupid, and that some people have been throwing shade on imagined fear is frustrating as hell. Now, we also get an official comment from a 2K spokesperson who says the following, While Borderlands 3 is not a competitive game where boosts could lead to direct player advantages and could be considered a competitive concern, we still take a balance of the progression and loot systems in the game very seriously. We are still fine-tuning these systems in Borderlands 3, and the benefits of the boosts in the Deluxe, Super Deluxe, and Collector's Edition will provide, but at this stage, we can confirm that the loot and XP boosts will both be level capped and tied to specific pieces of gear, similar to boosts in past Borderlands games. The intent is to give those players an initial boost, but not something that permeates the entire Borderlands 3 experience indefinitely. So it doesn't sound like it's going to be something that's long lasting, of course, and uh, I don't think I would even use the XP boost. We'll see what happens with that one. Let me know what your opinion, opinion is about this one. But I hope to play it like regularly, like how it was meant to be designed out of the gate. Like vanilla, I guess you would say. But we do have additional stuff here as well uh, from the article. It says, the boost from past Borderlands games referenced here would be relics like the XP boosting Moxie endowment from Borderlands 2 which could be discovered in-game. It's worth saying that pre-ordering Borderlands 2 also provided access to the Vault Hunter's Relic, which boosted chances of finding rare loot by 5%. So it sounds extremely similar to what's happened already with Borderlands 2, and I don't recall there was an immense amount of controversy over the release of Borderlands 2 here. We just live in, I think we live in a brand new age, uh, of course, where... Drama is all the rage, uh, but uh, yeah, let me know what you guys make of this, of course. Now, uh, we do know that we will be getting golden weapon skins as pre-order bonuses. It says here, pre-order to get that gold weapon skins pack. You will not only be able to turn any weapon into solid gold, you can also bring out your favorite gun with a handy gold trinket. So this got to be part of pre-order bonuses as well. Now, there was a follow-up question to this one life that says here, so does this mean there are weapon skins since I can put this gold skin on any gun? Are there any other skins we can unlock via gameplay for weapons or buy? Great question. The official Borderlands 3 Twitter account replied promptly. They said this. Yes, weapon skins are a thing. Many weapon skins will be available through gameplay. Some will be available for purchase like through this pre-order bonus. We'll have more to share as we get closer to launch. So it seems like you will be able to, of course, again, obtain those weapon skins in a variety of ways. Now, is there going to be some sort of in-game store that has yet to be confirmed? It used to be that you could buy packs and stuff like that. Maybe we'll go that route with it. But uh, yeah, overall, the whole microtransaction controversies and stuff, uh, is very. Uh, it seems like it's very limited with Borderlands 3, thankfully. Even the XP boost thing, it seems like it's going to be very, very minor. Uh, at least in my opinion. I think the game is going to be so big and so huge. As long as they cap the XP boost and stuff like that. And it's very limited, which it seems to be. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal going into Borderlands 3. And Borderlands 3, it sounds like it's shaping up to be an absolutely huge uh, game. So I'm super hyped for it anyway. But anyway, uh, let's keep going here. Randy Pitchford has some additional comments about microtransactions that you may have missed. He says this, I'm generally 
very much against predatory monetization schemes in free-to-play games for consumable goods, and even more so against them in premium games. I tend to oppose such techniques both as an artist and creator, and also as a customer and gamer. Furthermore, he says the following, Evidence of my position is that we never sold golden keys and arguably consumable good in the Borderlands games. We had non-trivial levels of demand from customers to do so, but we did not relent. We chose to only give golden keys away via social media and partner relations. Furthermore, he says the following, Contrarily, I tend to be very supportive of post-launch monetization of durable goods as DLC in almost any form, again, as a customer. And as a creator, I think that new discrete content that took energy to create deserves to have the effort compensated. And I totally agree. And I do get where he's coming from with that one. And you know what? I'm actually really thrilled that they're going away from the live service route is and they're doing a season pass because I've missed season passes big time because of these live service games which depend so heavily on in-game microtransactions they have been such a pain in the butt and it seems like with a lot of those games that we've uh, been playing you've gotten less uh, stuff however the division 2 it seems like they're doing it very right uh, with a lot of the stuff that they're doing. So Ubisoft, it seems like, are really getting in in tuned to uh, how to actually do it. So I'm curious to see if other developers can actually pick up on that. But yeah, Season Pass to me means that the content is going to be quality. And, you know, a lot of the DLC stuff for Borderlands 2, I think overall was pretty well received. All right, so let's keep going here. Now, Randy Pitchford also had some comments and he voiced them about the Epic Games uh, store versus Steam debate. As you guys know, Borderlands 3 will be first available on the Epic, Epic Game Store for the first six months. So they're going to be getting, you know, uh, Epic Games is going to be taking less of a cut, I should say, than what Steam would take, which would always benefit the developers. They've been working on this for five years. Uh, but let's dive into this. And you know what? I would prefer, of course, if the game was available to everyone everywhere on every platform. Uh, and it seems like in time that will eventually be happening, hopefully, so let's cross our fingers. But let's uh, do this right now. Let's talk about what Randy Petrus had to say. Now, Lil McFlurry says this, My single best argument is that Steam is and has been better than any other platform when it comes to features, popularity in general. Uh, Epic Games is just now starting and needs more time to develop before I will start using it. Uh, now, Randy Pitchford follow up saying this, So this point is about competing comparing relative features, right? That currently Steam has features that Epic Store does not. I think it's a fair point. I'll be happy to look at that point with you over a few following twi tweets. Please don't respond until I say done, okay? Now he goes on a tweet spree here saying the following. First, please understand that although I may have thoughts and opinions about this topic, the authority here truly is in the hands of our publishing partner, 2K Games. So while I may have some influence, I cannot force anything and this ship has sailed, so to speak. Furthermore, he says the following. Currently, Steam has a bunch of features that the Epic Games Store does not. That's fact. We could probably rank the prior priority of those features from top to bottom. And while we may disagree a little on the ranking, there is probably an optimal priority to go after features. Furthermore, he says also some features that Steam has may be features that are not part of Epic's vision and some features Steam never contemplated may be part of Steam's vision. Uh, the vision for how a store should interact with a customer and a developer and a publisher is all part of the equation. And then he follows up saying the following, Epic has published a near-term roadmap. This roadmap includes a look into things they are committing to. If I were a betting man, I would expect that there are more things that happened uh, than what they are committing to. Furthermore, he says, we also must acknowledge that Borderlands 3 does not exist today, but rather it will exist in September. The store will be different when the game launches. It will become a boon to the store if they bring sufficient features to make customer experience great for us. And then he says the following, Epic will suffer again if by the time Borderlands 3 launches, the customer experience is not good enough. This is a tremendous forcing function for Epic. He follows up saying, this is also really good for Borderlands 3 as Borderlands 3 will be the biggest by far new game to arrive on Epic Store since they launched and Epic can be sure to invest huge amounts of resources specifically 
for the features most important for Borderlands 3. And then he says the forcing function of that will in turn make all those features available uh, on a faster timeline than otherwise possible. And this is good for all games uh, from both the customer perspective and the developer publisher perspective. And then he says, so now you can ask me what if they don't get all the features I care about done in time or but why not just support both stores? Why do we care whether Epic has Borderlands 3 as a forcing function when we're already happy with Steam or some other question and done smiley face. So there is his argument there. And, you know, again, my sentiment is the ideal situation would be to have Borderlands 3 right, right out of the gates available to everyone on any platform existing within the PC world. So, uh, but I do, you know, I do get where the developers are coming from. If you spend five to six years of your life uh, developing a game, or even like two to three, what have you, and you're really intense about developing this game, and you're overworking, and you're going over time, and you're crunching right at the end of the game's release, I mean, you're going to be want to be rewarded, of course, that makes sense, and that's something, the big draw with Epic Game Store right now, and I think that in time, what could happen is Steam may wake up and really start offering better deals to developers. So, in the long-term approach with this whole situation, it could be better for developers. Now, you may remember, uh, with Metro, it's like $10 cheaper. So, a lot of people have argued, yeah, well, given that, they're, uh, that Epic Game Store is taking less from the developers, why wouldn't they, you know, make the game cheaper on the store. Well, you have to also remember that uh, with more funds, that means they could do a lot more stuff with Borderlands 3's DLC following up. They can hire a lot more people and then also put better tech and stuff into the next game, Borderlands 4. And they're also working on, I think it's uh, Brothers in Arms, uh, which I'm super hyped to hear more about that. So they can build their portfolio even more and more, which means more people can be hired and there's more jobs and stuff like that. So... It's definitely an interesting uh, argument for sure, but I get both sides of this argument. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. There's the latest happenings around Borderlands 3 and uh, Gearbox software. Some interesting stuff. Thank you guys. Stay tuned here for more Borderlands 3 and open world gaming goodness. I have you guys covered, and I will see you next time. Take care. <laughs>